I love Christmas and I love cruising, so putting them together sounded like a perfect combination. But was it? This past Christmas, I convinced my partner, Mark, that we should do a seven-night Holland America cruise to Mexico out of San Diego. While he was excited about escaping cold, wintry London, he raised four big fears as we made our plans. They're things I should have paid more attention to. It was, though, through meeting people on the ship like Liz and her group of 11, which later helped me really understand who's right and who's wrong for Christmas cruising, as you're about to find out. Welcome aboard, crew. I'm Gary Bembridge, and I'm going to make it fun and easy to discover, plan, and enjoy amazing cruise vacations. Before I come back to Liz, what was the first fear that Mark raised? The cost. Christmas cruises are much more costly than at any other time of the year. That's partly because Christmas cruises are in such high demand and they sell out really, really quickly. But did we actually get much more value for that higher price of the Christmas cruise? Not really, no. Certainly there were some Christmas decorations up, like all cruise ships do at this time of the year. There was a particularly beautiful gingerbread village, which all cruise lines also seem to do. There was a Christmas lunch on the menu, Santa Claus arrived, but we didn't get significantly more for the huge amount more we were paying. We were simply paying more to be on a ship at Christmas. If we'd gone two weeks earlier, we'd have had the same itinerary, the same cabin, and pretty much the same entertainment. The daily program would have been pretty much the same, the food the same, and yet it would have cost 30% less. That's a really important consideration because you're going to pay much more for cruising over Christmas, but for not much more. But was it worth it, of course, though, for other reasons? Was that 30% worth it? The second concern Mark had was would the passengers be completely different at Christmas? Now, Holland America mostly caters to couples who are perhaps a little bit older. That's the appeal of the line. Although I'm in my early 60s, I'm often actually amongst the younger group on many of their cruises that I've been on. I don't usually find many families on board and there's not a big party atmosphere on a Holland America cruise normally. People often joke that Holland America is a dead zone after 10 p.m. at night. I think that's a little bit unfair, but it definitely is a much quieter, calmer kind of experience. Going on a Holland America cruise at Christmas was completely different to it usually is. Many people chose this particular trip because they had a good itinerary, sailing out of San Diego. It was handy for people, for example, on the US West Coast. Families chose it because it was basically a convenient Christmas escape on their doorstep. There were over 400 children on board, which is unheard of for Holland America. The average age was way younger than it would usually be. And so the experience, of course, matched it. It was often raucous by the pool, the nightclub was packed late, and there was just much more of a party feel, not just because it was Christmas. For example, even the How to Fold Your Towels into Animals class was a vibrant, boisterous event because there were kids and teens piling in. The entertainment was much more family friendly than usual, with the films shown at the pool, mainly kids' Christmas films like Home Alone, and even the comedy gigs were PG rated. They toned it down. We didn't get a traditional Holland America experience. Another consequence of the passenger mix was that many things that I would normally expect on a Holland America cruise didn't happen. There weren't enrichment and destination speakers, for example. The only things they ran were these kind of standard lectures they do, which are clearly written at head office, and they're delivered by the cruise director with some audio visual effects. They were kind of things like Holland America's origin story, you know, the history of board games. They weren't topics tailored to our very specific cruise. The next key concern Mark had was that Christmas cruises would get overly busy. And it was a way bigger issue than I'd actually expected. The ship was selling at around 115 to 120% capacity. Now, the way capacity is measured on ships is based on the number of fixed berths. So that's normally two in a cabin. On this voyage, because there were so many kids and families, we saw many cabins with third or fourth occupancy, or perhaps with groups of friends sharing a cabin. That made the experience really busy. Every event was packed which if you were doing something like trivia was fun, of course, but even the bingo was spilling over into another room. This was completely 
out of the ordinary for Holland America. The casino was ram packed full every single evening with only one or two slot machines at best unused. All the tables were packed with players and you often had to wait to get a seat at those. Getting a seat at shows was harder than usual and some shows had standing room only. This was the same at some of the other music venues like the Rolling Stone Rock Room, BB King Blues Club, packed, packed, packed. Crowd showed up in a couple of more disruptive ways though on this particular Christmas cruise. Getting a table right away at dinner in the main dining room, for example, became a big challenge for many people. Now we had booked a Neptune suite, which gave us access to Club Orange, this is a private dining restaurant. But even then we often had to plan ahead to make sure we got a table. So we ended up having to aim to go when we thought it would be less busy, less crowded. And sometimes we had to wait for a table at Club Orange, which would be unheard of during any other time selling on Holland America. But when it came to the main dining room, crowds were an even bigger issue. There were too many people and lines were commonplace at popular times. We would see many people scattered all around with buzzers waiting for a table to be ready in the main dining room, the buzzer then alerting them when there was space for them. If you wanted a table for two, forget it. That wasn't possible. On a normal selling, it would be much easier. And for specialty dining on this cruise, the restaurants were sold out way ahead of time. I'm normally very organized, for example, and make reservations a week before, but even a whole month in advance, the most popular times in specialty dining restaurants were already sold out. The other crucial time when the crowds got too much was when we had a tender port in Cabo San Lucas. We got off the ship, we went to the beach, and by the time we came back, the line was enormous. It took well over an hour to get a tender ride back to the ship. It goes without saying too that the pool deck was overcrowded with kids often taking over the adult pool at times which normally they just wouldn't allow or wouldn't happen. We decided before the trip because we did expect it to be busy to spend money on getting away from it all and book ourselves into what's called the retreat. This is a private outdoor area with cabanas. We had to pay a couple of hundred dollars to go in there but it really really we discovered was worth it more than it ever is before because even in the normal quiet zones like the crow's nest area or as I mentioned the adult pool it could be overcrowded packed with kids and passengers and really busy. The other critical thing that Mark raised was was this cruise going to either be too Christmassy or not enough Christmassy? Well there was a Christmas tree not a particularly spectacular one there were some decorations around but it wasn't a kind of a magnificent Christmas experience designed all through the ship. Now some ships go a little bit bigger on that. Santa Claus did arrive but only in the morning when we and many others were on excursion so we didn't get to see Santa. They did have a carol concert but it was very late at night and we'd actually had a really busy day and we ended up missing that as well. So there were some limited Christmas events but we did end up missing most of them. Now I've seen other lines doing much much more so this may be more a function of this particular cruise. Overall this experience confirmed one thing about Christmas cruising to myself and Mark. As we spoke to people around the ship, we realized that those having the most magnificent time on board were people that had come as a family. It was a way of bringing families together at Christmas without all the hassle of going to someone's house and all the palaver around catering and so on. And this is exactly what Liz and her family did that I mentioned at the beginning. They were a group of 11 people ranging from 11 years right through to 80 years of age and they were coming together and sharing a Christmas experience at sea. They all had an incredible time, Liz tells me. So I realized that a Christmas cruise as a family event was what really made a Christmas cruise special. For us as a couple, going on a cruise over Christmas and paying 30% more than normal was not good value or that special due to all those downsides that I mentioned. As an aside, I was struck by a post on this issue from my fellow vlogger friends Paul and Carol Love to Travel that happened at the same time. They went as a couple on an Azamara cruise to Australia over Christmas and they found it really hard being away from their family. And I think this was all exacerbated and driven by the fact that they were surrounded by all these families having a great time and they weren't sure they would do it again. When it came to solo travelers, there were some on the trip and a few in Club Orange with us. What I realized as a regular solo traveler myself is they appeared much more isolated than they normally would be on a cruise. First of all, this is because the number of family groups on this cruise meant there were few opportunities 
for solos to share tables at mealtimes, for example. Even going on excursions, which is a really good time to start chatting to people, families were going together, so they were kind of a group together, and so there were fewer people that you could just start to get to chatting to as a solo traveler. Would I do a Christmas cruise again? I don't think I would, unless I was going with an extended group of people, friends or family, then I would perhaps consider it. If you found this interesting, why not watch this, where I talk about what Holland America does well and does less well the rest of the year, starting with exploding the biggest myth that people have about them. See you over there.